Hello YouTube, today I'm discussing a very important topic on this channel which is genetics. For some people, genetics is the most important aspect of bodybuilding and they're not wrong. That being said, I also think at the same time that genetics really don't matter and in this video I want to explain why. So I have my little handy piece of paper here, I'm going to try and follow from here but mostly talk to you directly because this is a topic that for some people will be your limiting factor. It will be the reason why you never build a good body. Not that you didn't have the potential, but you failed to realize the potential because you were demoralized. And demoralization is the enemy of the bodybuilder and of anyone who wants to actually build something and make something out of their life. You need to be vitalized. You need to be energetic and motivated and disciplined. Anything beyond that is just going to be a detriment to your life. So you need to reject that and I'm going to offer arguments to explain to you logically why you should be rejecting it because it's what makes the most sense. So first off, let's talk about genetics because I want to help you understand the context of the argument. So genetics are pretty much whatever constitutes the way your body is going to interact with the environment and what people call genetics is mostly gifted and determined at birth. So these are cards you're gifted, right? If you're thinking of life like a game of, of poker, these are the cards in your hands, okay? Just by saying that, you should already understand that based on the way you play your cards, life is going to be greatly different. A good poker player will beat a bad poker player even with a worse hand. But that's besides the point, I will get to that later. So what I accept as genetics are things that you cannot change at all, they're going to be set so that for example, for bodybuilding, we can discuss the length of the limbs. You can discuss the frame, if it's wide, if it's narrow. You can discuss the insertion of the muscles. You can discuss even the myostatin inhibitors in the muscle that makes, makes it so that some muscles will grow faster and some will grow slower. You can discuss things like hormonal profile, which is extremely important for bodybuilding and natural bodybuilding. Do you produce a lot of tests? Do you produce a lot of growth hormone? Are you deficient in those two aspects? All of that are going to play a role. Besides that, you have more absolute expressions of genetics like size. Some people will say that size is the most important thing for a male, for example, and if you're short, you're screwed. This is genetics. There is a, there is a percent and a range that you can, by your own behavior and action, actually have an impact on when it comes to your size, but it's limited, meaning that there is not a single person on earth that could have been seven feet, but they did something wrong and therefore they're five feet. It's a striking range. You're going to be predetermined to be a certain size. And that also falls into the big issue with genetics is that people feel like it's unfair and they're right. They would be right. Genetics are unfair. Why? Because genetics are the direct expression of what life is. It's the evolution of biology. This is what you are. You're an animal. And therefore, the second you were born, you were entering a world that is entirely unfair by default because it follows the laws of competition and nature. That being said, I have no idea what that noise is. That being said, the, uh, the expression of that genetic is going to be also limited in its power. And you'll see that as I go through the expression and the actual explanation of what I mean by, it, by the genetics don't matter. But I also want you to know one thing. When it comes to genetics, you could potentially be born and die. That would be genetics. You can be born with a disease that is going to kill you before you're two years old. That is genetics. So in absolute terms, yes, they matter. But for the most part, people will not fall into a category of genetic disease that is going to constitute something so blatantly unfair that they should be complaining about it. So in terms of bodybuilding, I want to discuss genetic potential and genetic gifts because these are different and to understand the rest of my argument, you need to understand that. So when I, what I call genetic potential is the expression of your genes throughout the years. The way your genetic potential is going to express itself is going to be based off of what you do with it and time. So it's two things. It's action and it's patience pretty much because it's, it's chronological. It's going to come eventually but you need to wait. And then you have genetic gifts. And genetic gifts are going to be something that you can use immediately because 
there are clear expressions of your genetics that are blatant, like you can see them right there. So for example, having long segments is a genetic gift, meaning that you can immediately utilize it to deadlift more weight. And it's not like your arms past your, your, your growth spurt in your teen years are going to keep growing. So they're not a genetic potential per se. They're there and that's that. And this discrepancy and that difference between the two is very important because a lot of people confuse genetic gifts for genetic potential. And they will see people with genetic gifts and they will say, well, I don't have that and therefore I have bad genetics. But that is a misunderstanding of genetics. Just because someone has something you don't doesn't mean that in the grand scheme of, scheme of things you're worse off. Because that would be seeing the human race as a giant race, meaning that you are in competition with everyone else. And if that would be the case, then yes, someone being better than you would mean you're worse off because you are in the race. So if someone is first, then by default you're second. But life doesn't work like that. It just is not going to have that impact on you at all unless you let it. Meaning that if you compare yourself to people who are gifted, then yes, of course, you have bad genetics compared to them. But in absolute terms, you do not have it. And I would encourage you to count your blessings when you can. Because if you go back to my example of someone who died when they're five, compared to you, they have bad genetics. You have neutral genetics, meaning that it's not good or bad. It's going to be up to you. And it's highly unsightly, in my opinion, to complain when you're not crippled, you don't have any genetic uh, disease or illness that is going to prevent you from lifting, and you haven't even tried yet. And that's the big part. A potential can only be revealed with work. This is also the difference between the gift and the potential. Most people, what they mean when they say, oh, I have bad genetics, what they truly should be saying is, I have bad work ethic, and I haven't been able to determine if my genetics are good or not yet. But of course, they don't. And I'll get into the topic of why people sort of try and cling to the idea that they have bad genetics. It's a psychological factor. It's easy to explain. But before that, I want to talk about the potential and the fact that it is not something that is revealed with a simple glance. So, for example, if you take my case, if you look at me when I was 15, 16, I was skinny. I was a kid who was growing very fast. My frame was not really growing as I was getting taller. I still had narrow shoulders. I had a large waist. I had very small arms, very small legs. I had no muscle tone. I was skinny fat by some standards. So technically, I had bad genetics at that time. And if you look at me three years afterwards, I still had bad genetics because even though I trained, I didn't blow up like some of those kids. Did it mean that in absolute term I had bad potential for bodybuilding? Yes, you could say so. Does it mean that I had bad genetics? Absolutely not. Why? Look at me today. Do you think I have a bad genetics? Do you think that the body I built is not something to, to be proud of? It's not something that is respectable. Do you think I'm small? If you answer yes to these questions, and by all means, you can say that I have bad genetics. But in my opinion, I have proven that with work, you can reveal a potential that was never there in the first place. And that will also bring up the more philosophical question of, is there even such a thing as potential? Meaning that if you can change the way your body looks so much that it looks like a completely different person with a different set of DNA and genes, was there even such a thing in the first place? Of course, I'm not saying that you just acquire a brand new DNA as you train, but I do think that the notion of a set potential based on if you're skinny or fat when you're young is idiotic because it represents nothing. It's a value that will stay with you until you decide to change it. And until you do decide to do it, of course, you will have bad genetics. But the expression of the potential can only be done through action. And I also want to talk about the fact that, yes, when you're young or when you're it's just my age, in your 20s, in your 30s, you will see people who are gifted. I've met those people. I've played sports. Anyone who's played sports has met freaks. Guys who don't train, who are bigger than you, faster than you, stronger than you, who can do things that you cannot see yourself doing. The, these guys exist. I'm not going to say they don't. I'm not going to say that they're not 
actually the type of people who are going to surpass you based on their genetics alone, but they are rare. And on top of that, who cares? It's not your life. Again, until you're entering competition with these people, it truly does not matter. You need to be focusing on you because just simply that guy having better genetics doesn't mean that yours are bad. Just because he's there in terms of potential and gifts doesn't mean that you're certainly here. You're just average. And that's perfectly fine. And most people are average. And that's perfectly okay. I am personally average to below average. And I was still able to get it done. And I wanted to also talk about the fact that in terms of proof, I wanted to discuss pro bodybuilders and the way they look like before and after the drugs. Because when you look at these monstrous guys on stage and you look at their pictures when they were natural, when there was no doubt that they were not on any product, look at the way they look. They're just regular kids. You don't see them looking insane when they're 15 or 16 for the most part. You could say that they have a good frame and everything, but in terms of muscles, they didn't have anything. And then they jumped on the product and they blew up. So you could say that one is because they're very receptive to the product, or you could also say that it's simply because their body naturally reacted to years and years of drugs. And why do I say that? I say that because for naturals, it's going to be the same thing. A big portion of genetics is your hormonal profile. Issue is, every time I hear someone discuss it, it's always, oh, I have low T, I have low this, I have low that. And they, they speak about it as if it's going to be like this for the rest of their life. But it's just not the case. Your hormonal profile as a natural also evolves. The, in the grand scheme of things, the total amount of tests in your body is going to keep raising and raising and raising until you're 20, 35, 40. So if you're 15, you don't have bad genetics because your genetics haven't even expressed themselves yet. They're like a budget that they still have to blossom to be able to actually show you what you can do. Of course, if you sit on your butt and just complain and say, oh, I'm skinny because I have bad genes. Well, guess what? You're going to still be skinny in five years. I can tell you that if I had the power to go back in time and completely demoralize my, uh, my young self, if I could tell myself when I was young, don't do it, it's not worth it, just play video games, don't even try training, you don't have what it takes. I can tell you that today I would still be 160, maybe 150 pounds at six feet tall. That's the difference of 60 pounds. Guess why? Because the action and the training boosted my hormonal profile, which made me the person I am today, which also sort of, you know, blows a hole in the entire potential thing because your potential is what you do with it. It's not an absolute state. When it comes to uh, PEDs, I also want to talk about their standards because I do think that a lot of the demoralization and uh, just depressing nature of bodybuilding on YouTube fitness and in life in general, because it's, it really is also outside of the, the virtual sphere, comes from PED use, meaning that they've completely destroyed standards. You have on one hand of the spectrum people who are completely delusional and who think that all of these guys are natural and therefore their standards are way too high, unrealistic. They think they'll look like them in two years. They're usually the type of people who buy their supplements, who buy their training program, and who think that they're actually going to be able to achieve that. And they are lost. That's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum is going to be people who might have been in the first category, have been lied to, and now their standards are just crushed. Meaning that they cannot accept and understand the fact that you can be muscular naturally, you can be big naturally. For them, it's over. Meaning that every time they'll see someone who looks jacked, that person is on steroids. 100% of the time, they have no doubt in their mind. Why? Because they've integrated the idea that themselves will never be able to look good. And that is what they project around them. For them, the wood is now this. It's either you're skinny or you're on roids. There is no in-between. And they're both toxic. Both of those mindsets are toxic because they focus on unhealthy standards. And you can't blame those people. When the, with the amount of liars on YouTube Fitness, I mean, every other guy is taking stuff and lying about it. It's at this point, there are more dishonest frauds on YouTube Fitness than honest people by a large margin. 
So when you've been lied to again, again, and again, at some point, you just stop trying. Issue is the only person hurt by that behavior is you. So it's up to you to actually get back on your feet and work, just work, become your own standard. For me, I never looked up to anyone in terms of muscular physics and body. I was my own standard. I based it off of anime and manga, but these people don't exist. So I really just was looking at my body evolving and thinking, okay, I'm growing. Let's keep growing. I don't have a limit because I don't have a standard. And I think that's very important. And I also want to say for the people who, uh, who might be basing their standards and their ideas of genetics off of pro bodybuilding. The reason why I say pro bodybuilding completely destroyed the standards and the, the way people approach genetics is that they completely turn the entire equation on its head because they remove one of the most important aspects of genetics for natural bodybuilding, which is the hormonal profile. Boosting your hormonal profile through years and years of training is one of the biggest components of building a big body as a natural. They don't have to do that. They inject it. So the biggest portion of genetics is not even part of their equation. And yet, who speaks more about genetics than pro bodybuilders? It's genetics this, genetics that. Why? Because they exist in a, sphere, in a sphere and a realm where their genetics and potential are expressed to the fullest because the most important aspect of it is maximized. Since they can just in inject hormones, all of the aspects of muscle insertion, frame, ligaments, all of that stuff is now under scrutiny and it's magnified. Why? It's the one thing they have to care about. It's the one thing they can actually look at because the rest is taken care of. You're a natural, not for you. It just doesn't work like that for you. And yet you still think like this. You're, the way you think about genetics is directly linked to the way pro bodybuilders think of genetics. And for you, it doesn't matter. Guess what? If your bicep ins inserts one inch higher, it doesn't matter. If your calves are a little bit longer than the other guy, it doesn't matter because in absolute terms, you still have to put in the work. So get those ideas out of your head because they're slowing you down. And as I said, you don't know your potential before your start. And I'm repeating myself, but you need to get that through your thick score because I've seen too many kids, young boys, young men, who are going to right off the bat say, I have bad genetics. They haven't even been training two years. How do you know you have bad genetics? You cannot base it off of your current physique. It just doesn't work like that. And yet these same guys are going to grow up to be some of those, do you even lift dudes in their twenties who are still as small, still as weak and still complain that they can't grow and they'll still blame their genetics. You have to put in the work. Don't buy into the guys who tell you that you can reach a natural limit in three years. Even if, and it's a big if because in my opinion, it doesn't exist. But even if the natural limit existed, you think you could reach it in three years? You think the human body is that weak that you mastered it in three years? You, you, you lifted weights for, for 30 months and that you like you peaked. That's the peak of human evolution. You like you did it. Forget about Darwin. You did it. You're the peak of human evolution. You cannot potentially progress more. Do you truly think that? Because if you do, you have a problem and it needs to be fixed. And if you think like this and you're not even 20 yet, get it done before you go to college, before you learn how to cook, before you get a job, before you open a bank account, before you get a car. This is what needs to be fixed because this is a mental problem that is going to damage and impair your ability to evolve through life. Not just for your gains, forget about gains, for yourself. If you believe you're so flawed as an individual because you have bad genes, understand it's going to be with you for the rest of your life. So you need to make peace with it now. In terms of the black pill and what I just spoke about, you need to reject these things because as I said, they're not good for you. Genetics, they matter for one reason. They matter because they're going to be aligned with your personal goals. What it means by it is once you've worked enough and you've developed a pretty good body, you are going to be able to assess your weaknesses and strong points. And this is where the work really starts, meaning that your body was like a big rock when you started bodybuilding. 
and you went at it with a hammer, with a novice program that wielded a ton of results. And now you sort of have a, sh a human shape, sort of. Now it's up to you to sort of sculpt it. And as you sculpt it, you'll realize, oh, the waist is a little big, the shoulders are a little small. Okay, this area of the body tends to grow faster. This is easier to do for me. And this is where genetics take a place. This is actually the first time you need to worry about your genetics. And the thing is, most people who whine about genetics are novices. And it should be the other way around. People who should talk about genetics are advanced. Why? Because just like pro bodybuilders, to an extent, they've done enough of the work that they can focus on the minute details now. So you're going to actually look at your body and think, what makes sense for me in terms of training? And that's extremely important for you to determine, but you have time. You don't need to think about it now. I want to also talk about the people who propagate those ideas because there are people who do that. It's not just in a vacuum. And in a sense, to go back to the fatalist and black pill mindset, it is going to be an instinct in some people because the reason why you have so many individuals who whine about genetics is because genetics is it's an invisible culprit you are the victim of something that is not tangible. It's not there. You're accusing something that does not exist. And when you try and wrap your head around it, it makes a ton of sense. Because usually when you point the finger at something and you blame something, you have to explain why that thing is causing that. All right? If I accuse someone of hurting me, I have to pro provide proofs. But for genetics, it's the greatest excuse of all time. You can just say, oh, I'm not big, but it's my genetics. Do you realize that when you say that, you're essentially saying either one, th one, you're essentially saying my ancestors suck and they gave me bad genes and because of them, I'm like this, so screw my ancestors, or you're saying I'm a waste of human talent and I was born with no ability. I was somehow destined to be skinny for the rest of my life and there's nothing I can do about it. And on top of that, I'm going to cry about it. Which one of these options do you want to pick? Because that's one or the other. And that is the fatalist and black pill mindset. It's the idea that you're a victim. Oh, it's my fate. I can't potentially fight against it. It's too strong. Guess what? It doesn't exist. Fate is you. You inflicted that upon yourself because your potential didn't exist in the first place. You are the one who materialized that in real life. If you're still skinny by the time you're 30 and you've been quote unquote training for five years, Guess what? You don't know how to train. You don't train hard. It's your fault. Don't blame your genetics. The amount of people and male, especially male, that are going to be by default born with a disability, meaning that they cannot grow, is minimal. It's almost nothing. Most people, as I made a video about it last week, they're going to destroy their hormonal profile with alcohol, smoking, junk food, poor sleep habits, tap water, and then they're going to say, oh, my genetics. You did that to yourself. You, it's the equivalent of cutting your arm off and then saying, I can't write postcards anymore. You cut your own arm off. Of course you can't. It's your fault. The good thing with your hormonal profile is, unlike with a cut arm, you can actually sew it back on. So you should be working on it instead of being a little whiny about it. It's, <laughs> it is beyond annoying because I've done it. I came back from bad genetics. So you can too. And the one thing that you need to do is action. That's it. Get disciplined, work on it. It's as simple as that. And guess what? Life is work. So you're going to have to work at some point. So why not get it done? Especially if you love bodybuilding and building muscle, try and actually get good at it. So that's that. I want to, I want to go back to the people who boast about genetics because, as I said, you have the black pill mindset of people who are inflicting themselves with that idea and delusion that they're stuck and they were just born to be suckers. But then you have the opposite. You have people who will tell you, oh, I was born with great genetics and I'm a, I'm a god among men and you are peasants. You see that on YouTube fitness all the time. I have no idea how people can watch these individuals. I don't know if they're masochistic, if they enjoy being talked down like this. I personally don't get it. But understand two things. One, most of these men, and I say most, but in reality, it's all of these men, they've been working for years. So it's the same for them. It's the same logic. They cannot claim to have good potential when they started because they realize their potential through work. So if they had never worked, guess what? Their potential would be garbage because it's what work is that work that made it actually 
realize itself. And some of them, yes, were born gifted, but understand also that you can be gifted and still have a good potential, a good amount of evolution, which also means you can be ungifted and still have that potential. And then number two, it's people who take gear. People who take steroids and brag about our genetics, I don't, it's not just that I don't get it. They are idiots, of course, but I'm surprised they don't understand how stupid they sound because if you took away their drugs, they would shrivel away. So how your genetics treating you now that you lost 50 pounds in three months because you, you can't pin yourself anymore? How, how are your golden genetics working for you now? Since hormonal profile is one of the most important thing and their hormonal profile is artificial. How does that contribute in their brains? Well, I think I know why. Because of the hormones make them extremely cocky and confident and our subscribers just eat it up for some reason. I guess we, God actually is dead but replaced God with celebrities and it, some people like it. But wrap your head around this one. They don't have those amazing genetics because they are not natural. In my opinion, the truest expression of genetics for people who lift is staying natural because you can actually see what your body is doing by itself without a chemical crutch and you'll get to live, you know, beyond your 50s, which is a pretty good perk. But I'll make a full video on the lies of PD users because they had it coming for a long time. We're going to wrap it up pretty soon, but... I want to talk about a concept that is pretty much the reason why I made this video. And it's a concept that I call Schrodinger's genetics. If you're familiar with the experiment of Schrodinger, it's the entire thing with the cat that you put in the box. And before you open the box, you don't know if the cat is dead or not because the box is not open. There's a mechanism in the box that has 50% chance of killing the cat, blah, blah, blah. So basically, what is Schrodinger's cat? It's a state of limbo. It's a state of an incapacity to know for sure whether the cat is alive or not. What I call Schrodinger's genetics is the same thing. Before you worked, you cannot know if you have good potential or not. And to go even further, once you worked, you will be told and you will prove to yourself that you had good potential. Guess why? You actualized it. If you never work, on the other hand, you're going to prove to yourself that you had bad potential. Guess why? Because you didn't work on it. So it never actually was created in real life. It shows why. It shows what? This is you when you start. You have two paths to take. The paths of working and the paths of not working. They create different realities. Okay? You want to be in the one where you worked because this is the one where you actually have potential. And guess what? This also goes backwards. Because if you start and you have bad genetics, quote unquote, people are going to tell you you have bad genetics. I've had people my entire life tell me, oh, don't lift weights. It's a waste of time. You can't build muscle. Year after year, I would show up every year bigger and stronger and they would still say it to a point where one day I showed up so big and so strong. They were like, oh, well, you had good genetics to start with. The same people who told me for five years that my genetics were hot garbage switched their entire speech, you know why? Because they are illogical idiots and most people are like that. They don't get it. And that's the entire idea behind Schrodinger's genetics. You are someone with bad genetics until you prove you have good genetics. Guess what that means? Everyone has good genetics. No one has bad genetics. I cannot, I personally cannot envision someone who works 10 years seriously and is going to have a body that doesn't look good or decent. I don't think it's possible. And once you're at that point, you're better than 99% of people. So you have good genetics. Do you understand what I mean by that? And I see that on the channel as well. I've had people when I started and I was still a bit puffy telling me, oh, you are at your genetic limit, you have bad genetics, you'll never make it. Look at me now. Look at how I look. The same people came back in my comments and said, oh, you had good genetics in the first place. And why do they do that? Most of the time, they do that to discourage people from following the example of people who worked. Meaning that if you point at someone like me who started with a pretty low body in terms of standard and I wasn't looking too good and I didn't look like I had good potential and I made it. Well, these people don't like it because they are part of the black pill crowd and this would be a sign that they themselves, if they tried, would actually make it. 
but they don't want to try because they're wimps. They don't want to put in the hard work. So what do they do? They invent reasons to explain why they failed. And what is the reason? They'll say that that person has good genetics. It's the entire thing. Good and bad genetics. It does not matter because it does not exist in absolute terms. You really need to take that to heart. That Schrodinger genetic thing, think about it every day in your life. Why? Because if you are going to be successful, you need to be a demonstration of that principle. You need to be the person that people said you had bad genetics and you proved them wrong. You were the cat that got out of the box with massive biceps. This is what you need to be aiming at. And understand that all of the logical fallacies that surround genetics and the discussion on genetics and the black pill, they can all be solved if you focus on Schrodinger's genetics and the different, what I would call dimensions or parallel worlds, it can open. So really put a lot of brain power into that. And I'm going to leave you with that. But I just want to finish with an example, uh, a practical example of the fact that genetics really don't matter. I thought for the longest time I had bad calves and lats genetics. I even thought I had high insertions for the lats. Guess what? I didn't. It just, I never worked them properly. If you look at the road to a bigger back playlist, look at the way my back evolved in eight months. It looks much bigger now. I have lats now. Guess why? I work them. And that's the answer to everything in life. Work. If you don't work, of course, there's going to be no results. And when I say work, it's not one week. It's not 10 weeks. It's not 100 weeks. It's until you're dead. You're going to keep working until you croak. And that's that. It's the end of the story. There is no conversation to be had around that because it's the only way to actually actualize your potential. So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to throw that in the garbage. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.